Hi guys, welcome back. So let's talk about Italy versus Wales, much anticipated, and I mean it, there's a lot of interest in this game, probably the most interest I've known for an Italy game, because they're playing for maybe the wooden spoon, both teams have lost three from three, Wales have looked the worst they've looked for a long time, Italy have shown signs of looking good, but haven't got any wins, this is possibly their best chance yeah, to avoid that wooden spoon. For Italy, only one change, so that sounds good, but the change is not that good at all. Their best attacking player, Ange Kapowutsu, is out. A massive, massive attacking threat gone from the back line. In comes Tommaso Allen, who's a talented 10, good kicking passing, but nowhere near the running threat of Kapowutsu. So their counter-attack especially, no, their, ter their transition play from a turnover just won't be as good. And Italy's bench looks a little bit strange with a 6-2 split, but I guess with Allen starting at 15, you can cover 10 from there. A little bit risky. They've gone for an extra back rower, Zuliani on the bench. Maybe they're going to target the breakdown. Let me know why you think they've done that. But it's an impressive team. I've been particularly impressed with Lorenzo uh, Canone at 8. He's looked really, really decent. Garbisi wasn't overly sure about him from his comeback. He had a lot of strapping on, um, strapped to the max in the last match. Hopefully he looks a bit more free-flowing. I really like the look of their centres, though, Menoncello and Brex. They're just beastie pairing of power and pace. So, so dangerous. That'll be interesting to see how they match up against the young Welsh centres. So on to Wales, and the big question for me was what would Gatland do? Would he mainly stick with his older, more experienced players? Would he trust youth? He's kind of done a bit of both. More tinkering, six changes from the England game. Alan Wynne-Jones is out. That's the big headline, if you like. The young Daffod Jenkins is back in. I think he's super talented. I think he's got a great mentality for the game, but I do think he's probably a year or two off his prime. So a little bit of a risk, but yeah, he is the future, I would say. Liam Williams comes back into 15, and I was quite surprised he didn't play last game. I don't know if he had a little niggle or not, but it certainly gives him maybe a bit more height at the back and definitely more counter-attacking threat, ball in hand from 15. And a pretty ruthless call, taking Rezamit out of the starting team, putting him on the bench. He was that intercept try scorer versus England. Rio Dyer is in, and he's looked really good every time he plays for Wales. And he does seem to have the knack of getting involved in the game, maybe a little bit more than Rezamit potentially, but that's a pretty tough call there. Another big call is he's taken Thomas Williams out of the starting team and many people had slated his performance, said he should be dropped, although to be fair it's hard for any scrum half to look good for Wales at the moment I think, but Reese Webb getting a shot, he keeps shuffling his nines, he, you know, he really doesn't look like he knows what his best team is, hopefully he gets lucky this time. More changes in the pack. Wynne Jones gets another go at Loosehead with Thomas dropping to the bench. Uh, Chris Schwinzer uh, loses out completely after, to be fair, a couple of disappointing outings. Uh, we had expected a lot more than him. Thought he might be one of the breakout stars, but not yet. Wales' most impressive forward of 2022, in my opinion, Jack Morgan, comes back on, on the blind and hopefully his powerful ball carrying will get that Welsh attack some front foot ball, uh, some good ball for Webb to use. So I think that's a decent change, makes some sense. Lots of change on the bench, Baldwin's back in, Rafael is on the bench, um, North is back out there in the team on the bench. The back's replacements are pretty strange with no fly half at all. Seems like a massive gamble. I can only think that Liam Williams is the replacement fly half because I believe he started at fly half in his career. I think he's a half decent goal kicker as well. So let me know if you think Liam Williams is the replacement 10 and let me know if you think that is a risk too far because, yeah, I don't really like it, to be honest. Anyway, the whole selection just strikes a bit of hope rather than trust. Maybe a bit of desperation, but what can you do? You've got to try and find a team that's going to produce a quality performance when the others have failed. At least they've had a couple of weeks of good preparation. More news coming out saying that those strikes, those contract arguments had split the camp before the England game. So hopefully they've got over that at least a bit. Other news, we see the young centres, Hawkins and Grady, go again together. I think it's the way to go. Give them time together. See if they can get that understanding. They've definitely got the physical ability. Owen Williams continues instead of bigger and then most of the other changes I have mentioned. So let me know what you think of the Italian team, the Welsh team. Has Gatlin made the right calls? Because there's been a lot of calls. All those comments below and I'll catch you next time.